Welcome to Style Wise, the why in style. So today I want to talk about the history of the body con, the body conscious look. Where did it come from? We wear body cons all the time, but where did this look originate? Who created it and why is it so trendy right now? Well, this question sent me on a study that took longer than I would expect but it was actually very fulfilling so let's go back into the 90s um, this is what the bodycon looked like at that time this is actually the peak of the bodycon era and a quick Google search would leave you to believe that this man her ledger was the creator of what you see here the bandage dress or the bender dress as it was called at the time but in reality Azadine Alaya is the king of Kling. Herb Ledger studied under Alaya in the 80s. And why then is Alaya not credited as he should be? Well, you need to read my blog to find out all the juicy details on that. Meanwhile, look at this dress. Exquisite, exquisite, exquisite design. These are far beyond anything that Ledger was creating with his bandage dresses. And yet and still, he gets no credit and is just lost in history. So look at this 1986 collection of Elias and how much it looks like the timeless pieces of today. And these are other contemporary designs from the 1980s, also the same sort of slim um, body contouring, figure shaping body cons that we're used to seeing. And then if you go back even farther, go a little bit back into the 70s, you'll see that the slim silhouette is still prevalent. You have slinky polyester fabrics. They're a little bit looser, maybe a little more comfortable. But the 70s mini dress is definitely a precursor to the 1980s bandage dresses. Now you have the wiggle dress. And that is a precursor to that 1970s uh, mini dress. So you have TV shows like Mad Men and Vintage Enthusiasts of today wearing these wiggle dresses that keep these looks very alive. They're very classic. They show the figure. They're actually very modern considering that they are from the 1960s. Cut the hemline of one of those Supremes dresses and you got a bodycon there. Paco Rabanne of the 1960s, his chain mail dresses. These are obviously not tight. How could they be with that material? But you have a definite evolution going on here. So traveling back a little farther into the 1950s, you have the precursor to the wiggle, which is the sheath dress. And this was figure flattering must have for the post-war woman. And keep in mind that also the pinup era was alive and well into the 1950s. You have stars like Betty Page and Marilyn Monroe and they were flaunting their curves in sexy sheaths. And I want you to see this picture coming up where Monroe wears one with a panel right in the middle that's transparent and it just is so timeless and classic. It looks like something you could walk out in right now. So the 1940s sheath dresses were shown in both slinky, body-hugging silhouettes and also those a bit looser from the body that were made with slightly heavier fabrics like wool or wool blends. So check out this swimwear from the 1940s, add four inches onto that hem and bam you have an illusion bodycon any of these you could definitely see today or even a few years ago they were classic bodycon styles so look at these 1930s sheath dress this is a precursor to the 40s sheath dresses they're even a little bit more lightweight they're a little bit longer cotton blends or cotton fabrics and then you also have stars like Jean Harlow with Hollywood glam now you have the tight slinky sexy gowns which were extremely body conscious I mean Jean Harlow my god she refused to wear undergarments how much more body conscious can you really be definitely body conscious look there with the tight over the hips over the chest i mean that is body con all day long and the swimwear of the 1930s same thing as the 40s four inches that's a body con now 
1920s, the anti-fashion era, the boxy, the straight, the boy cut, the drop waist silhouette. This is a rebellion, you guys, a rebellion of the body conscious look. It, uh, the previous years you'll see were very constricting and this is the jazz era. You have sequins and feathers and short style haircuts. It was amazing. Now, this is what they shifted from in the jazz era. They shifted from these constricting hobble skirts, these constricting corsets that just pulled and like you couldn't even move. There were postcards made making fun of women. Like you're wearing this and you can't even make big steps when you walk. You can't go upstairs. You can't kick your feet. It was ridiculous. So the corsets were worn underneath to give you that contoured figure and as you move back into the 1900s they get even more extreme they pull you in tight at the waist they prop up your bust and even pregnant women wore corsets yes pregnant women wore corsets can you believe that they wanted this hourglass shape which was shaped like an s and check out these street style photos like how cool is that probably the first street style photographer right there and going back from the 1900s, it only gets worse. It only gets more constrained and tight and pulled with crinolines and bustles. And I could go all the way back to the Egyptian Colossus, which is the slim fitting dress worn by women of ancient Egypt. So it seems from the 1900s until now, the body conscious look has gone from being prevalent, even ridiculous and degrading to rebelled against in the 20s, found again due to Hollywood glam and pinup in the 30s and 40s, emerging heavily again in the 50s and 60s with wiggle dresses, and then flowing into the 1970s with comfy knit and polyester mini dresses, and then finally exploding again in the 1980s with Elias bandage look, ledgers copying him, and now us wearing tight, short, semi-see-through illusion dresses that resemble swimsuits from the 1940s. Whoa. So, this is still what I consider a very short version of the story. There are many influences and inspirations that we may never know. So where will the body conscious silhouette go from here? This is what I want to know. This is what my study has really brought me back to is the question of what will happen next because history, it shows us lessons, it shows us possibilities, but does not tell us the future. We make the decision there and the fun part is making your mark no matter what is trending. So the next time you go grab your body con, just remember the why in your style. Don't forget to like if you like, share with your friends, and also check out my blog for more information and even longer detailed description of what I'm talking about here. And don't hesitate to leave me any comments about things that you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.